Tentacruel is a very polarizing Pokemon for me personally. It's stuck in the slow level up group and its starting learn set and overall coverage could be a lot better. But despite all that, it still has a lot of potential. So I have sort of a love hate relationship with this little jellyfish. Today we'll be doing a Pokemon Red solo challenge. And if you need to know more, check out the description, but grab yourself a Sodi Pop because it's time to dive in. I think when you take a deeper look into what makes Tentacruel a good Pokemon, it starts with the stats. Now remember to be a high tier Pokemon, you just need a high stat with whatever type you're going to be doing damage with, and you're going to need a pretty good speed. And Tentacruel has a surprising 120 base special and 100 speed. That's more than enough. Where it gets a little dicey for me is the level up learn set. Now in general, I think Supersonic, one of the worst moves in the game. I think it's terrible. I think Rap is pretty slow. I think it's kind of antithetical to a fast run. And I think Acid is all right. Not great, but it's serviceable. But what sticks out to me is that there's no water moves on the starting learn set and we'll come back to that as far as tms go mega drain is about the only thing out of the norm as far as typical water top learn sets go but this thing does get swords dance now if you want to build yourself a sword stance tentacruel utilizing double edge and acid it's a free world nobody's stopping you but you're not going to see it in this video so right up front there's a couple of problems i only have physical moves and the good lord up above didn't give tentacruel any starting water moves and brock is going to require some levels and we have that pesky slow leveling group striking again it's going to hold another pokemon back so just to kind of give you the quick rundown on the plan here i'm going to battle all three bug catchers in viridian i'm going to pick up about 120 experience off of wild battles and when i'm done with that i'm going to take on the light years junior trainer but i'm just going to beat him i'm not going to blackout grind or anything like that let me be real with you guys and say that this fight is not great at all you can easily lose and in a perfect world i could just beat this trainer and move straight on to brock get the fastest time possible but you have to use rap to get past this one and we'll talk about rap more as the video progresses but i'm gonna heal after this fight because at the time i was pretty sure i needed every ounce of rap pp that i could get it really wasn't the case you'll see it coming up and i'll talk about this version red version versus yellow soon but this one wasn't great but the huge amount of experience that you get here does get us to level 10 and that's kind of where we're going to pick up at the rock solid pokemon trainer You can approach this fight multiple ways, but let me talk about the strategy that doesn't matter. Acid has a 1 in 3 chance to lower the target's defense, and you might think, hey, that's pretty good, but it will not increase your damage because Acid and Rap are just so weak. So its sole purpose here is to waste turns if you're using Supersonic like I'm going to do. I don't love Supersonic. I think it's awful, but if you can get Brock's Pokemon to hit theirself, this does a surprising amount of damage, and it's infinitely faster than using Rap. I get pretty lucky here. I get a quick two hit from Confusion, does a lot of damage, and I keep pressing my luck a little bit more. Now, it does cost me some time, but it doesn't cost me a reset or anything, and ultimately, it hits itself a little more. I finish it off with Rap, but just like the Sand Slash video, this Brock fight isn't really all that consistent. I had to go over a lot of strategies and kind of mull over this fight a lot, and even when we get to this finalized run here, it still took me a few resets to get the right battle here. Now, on to the Onyx, and the key thing here is that we have a lot of speed so we outspeed it and that takes out any guesswork out of the equation you know when it's going to use bide you know when to pull back on the damage but more so than the geodude onyx is a prime target for supersonic since it doesn't really do a ton of damage and confusion can really carve it up as well as knock it out of the bide so you might be surprised that i did not go for a single wrap on onyx because this strategy was just too good. And if you want like an actual consistent Brock, I would say you fully wrap the Geodude and then use the supersonic acid waste time on the Onyx. It'd be pretty good. Now your mileage may vary. And notice when I get to the end of this battle, you're gonna see that I have a ton of wrap left. It's because my strategy kind of changed up on the fly. I figured out the strategy kind of late, but it worked out pretty good. Now that that's over with, let's talk about what level 10 meant for this run. So I'm going to keep this brief. I often talk about my goals and how I pick the best Gen 1 games for my tier list, whether it be yellow, whether it be red. Now last time we did yellow for Sandslash, and I thought that this run right here was going to be a shoe in for yellow, 
And in yellow, level 10 felt great for Brock. And I thought with the extra levels in red version, along with Geodude having defense curl and things like that, red version would need to be about level 13. So being able to do this fight at level 10, that's a huge reason why I switched over to red version. Now, Tentacruel's transition from the mid game to the late game in yellow version also felt pretty bad and clunky in yellow. So that's a big reason why we're in red today also. But I just, I can't state enough how incredible and above my expectations it was to start off the run like this. It was unexpected. Going into Mount Moon, we get our first stab water move. Water gun, not a great move, but when you have this hive special, it's head and shoulders above anything you can get. And as far as extra battles go, I'm going to pick up the super nerd and then I'm going to move ahead to the double grass last. Now remember, water poison is a pretty unique topping and it means that we're only neutral to grass. So this battle, there's no risk at all. And then I'm going to pick up the hiker. We have water moves. It's very simple, very easy. But remember guys, that's that's the only training we're going to have to do. We didn't necessarily train that much on Brock. So we're a low level and that's mainly because of the slow leveling group. It's awful. So what this means at the very end when we fight the super nerd guarding the fossils we're only going to be level 16 that's not too bad but this is where we're going to have to talk about rap a little bit more i have problems with rap i don't like rap that much as a move but we'll give you a refresher course and this part of the game coming up in cerulean is kind of a bit of a pickle at level 16 misty just kind of does too much damage to you and then on the flip side you have rival number two with sand attack threats so let's just dive into rival number two and talk about rap a little bit as you may or may not know, rap is a trapping move, and in Gen 1, the opponent does not get to take a turn while you're using rap. That means if you outspeed, you can perpetually rap them until they faint, and there's no counterplay to it. Since Tentacruel's a fast Pokemon, when you have a threat like Pidgeotto, you can simply just use rap, get it into a range where one of your other moves will knock it out, and then you can just use that move, and you can just be safe in an otherwise pretty volatile fight. You know how Sand Attack goes, so we use that here. That's just the general rundown of rap. Now the rest of the battle is not going to be bad and we will go we'll show better examples of rap later But I wanted to kind of set it up how it goes and how it helps tentacruel get past parts that maybe otherwise It would need some more levels. It's going to come up way later I'll call it out when I feel it's necessary But this is kind of the first part of the game where you become a little rap reliant to get past this Pidgeotto But it's not too bad, but rap is going to play a significant part now after the battle We're not going to do nugget bridge next I mentioned at level 16 that misty was a bit of a problem, but just the way stats work, when you hit level 17, I guess you hit a couple of break points. Now all of a sudden, Starmie's tackles versus your acid start to look very favorable for Tentacruel. So that means we're going to backtrack a little bit and we're just going to hop straight into Misty. Now, unfortunately, you don't outspeed the Starmie, so it's pretty much like a, I guess, like a game of chicken where you're just doing a bunch of damage to each other and seeing who can survive. So to make that an actual reality where you can win, it's easier just to wrap the star you. So it's going to be another early wrap usage right here. We just don't want to take any damage, but we do outspeed, so this makes the wrap strategy that much more viable. Now, when you get to Starmie, all you got to do is use acid. Don't overthink it. Just use acid over and over. Misty could use an X defend, but with acid, Acid's one in three defense drop chance. It usually cancels out and most of the time you will lower its defense lower than that. But you can easily outpace here. You can get through this badge and it's pretty much possible because you do rival number two first and you're able to hit level 18 going into the star me. So this has huge implications for the run. First off, hitting level 18 for damage rounding, pretty big for extra damage, and then Bubble Beam. Bubble Beam is an incredibly strong early game move when you get stabbed when you're a water type. It's something you always want to be able to get before Nugget Bridge just to make it faster. You guys already know, nice cluster. You guys are smart enough. You already know what it, you know what Nugget Bridge means to me. So we really don't have to take a look at it. And instead, let's skip down to the SSN. Unfortunately, we can't get Body Slam. Now I'll go on record right now saying that if Tentacruel got Body Slam, I think the Swords Dance strategy would be much more viable. It would probably play closer to something like Venusaur or something like that, but it doesn't. We can only work with the moves that we got. I will be picking up the Gentleman Candy. And then after that, it's just gonna be straight on to rival number three. Now here I got Bubble Beam. 
You can play it safe like a little chump if you want to and use rap on the Pidgeotto, but I'm a man. I take risk. I'm gonna go for Bubble Beam, but here's, I guess, some bad luck, you would say. Bubble Beam doesn't knock it out. It lives on just one single HP, and of course, the computer's looking at me like, ha ha ha, and throws out the sand directly into my eyes. It doesn't even go for the false tentacruel eyes on the top. It goes for my actual eyes, so this means that the battle's a little bit of a slog. I still win, and let me remind you that even with all the sand attack misses and the extra time, it would be just as slow, if not slower, if I was to use rap at the start. Rap is a slow move. We'll, I'll show some details of that later and I'll get into some more thoughts, but I guess what I'm trying to say here is that I hate sand attack. So after the battle surge is coming up, in red version he has good AI, so he'll always use Thunderbolt or Thundershock, so it can be pretty bad. And for something like Kingler, this is a big reason why I went to yellow version, but let's just hop in and see why I stuck with red today. I just mentioned good AI, and the first two Pokemon don't really matter. You really wouldn't want to take a Sonic Boom from the Voltorb, but it's really not too bad. We kind of know where the issues is going to lie on this fight. Now, let me say right now, we outspeed the Raichu. That's great. That means we can use Rap. But there's one kind of thing about Surge that's annoying that usually doesn't matter in 99% of runs, and that's X Speed. You have two loose conditions pretty much in this fight. Number one, if Surge uses an early X Speed, and we're going to see that right here. And number two is if just for whatever reason, Reason you miss a rap or something like that and it gets off a crit thunderbolt now here he's gonna crit on thunderbolt anyway and get the early x speed so this is a reset and this was a pretty early reset here but let me just remind you guys that if you're weak to electric types lieutenant surge is a pretty good trainer in red version i know a lot of people dunk on them but i think they're just kind of misinformed i think maybe they watch too much bigger channels and they just decide that that's the truth i don't know going back into the second attempt you can see how this fight needs to go you just use rap get it into a range where you can do a bubble beam or two and knock it out and you just hope it doesn't use x speed too early now it uses x speed here but the key thing is that it doesn't use x speed during my first wrap which lets me get some very valuable chip damage down and what that means at that point on the, when I'm on the second wrap and he uses X speed, what it means is he pretty much has to get a Thunderbolt crit or he loses because Bubble Beam is now in range to one shot it. And that means we can take this with only one reset and that's really not bad at all. So it would be great to not have any resets. Of course, you wanna have every run be perfect. And if you got some extra levels, maybe it could be consistent. But remember guys, consistency doesn't equal fast and we're going for the fastest overall time. One reset, I'll take it. Now, unfortunately, we can't learn Thunderbolt. That would be absolutely amazing for this Pokemon. And you might think that we would skip over Rock Tunnel. We usually do, but we just saw in that Surge Battle, we just saw from the Pidgeotto earlier in Rival Number 2, Rap is a thing that's gonna come up a lot more. And this is gonna be kind of a little segment where we're gonna start to see more and more Raps. Raichu was the start of the gauntlet, and then when we move right ahead to the Rapping Junior Trainer, you have to chip down her Pokemon with Rap and then finish them off with an Acid. Now, I kind of make a little mistake here, but it doesn't cost me. But the point is that Rap is still faster than being put to sleep or being paralyzed and perma wrap by the enemy, and it doesn't end there. Like, the Rapping is still going to continue, because when we get to the very first Slowpoke, or let's just change that second Slowpoke, I'm going to use Rap because Slowpoke will only use Confusion, because if you didn't know, Pokemaniacs have good AI. Confusion will really start to add up, so wrap this thing down, get it into a range where a couple of acids or whatever can take it out. And if you think we're done with wrap for this section, we're not done yet. The very next trainer has an Onish that can do some status conditions to you, and you also want to wrap it down and finish it off with an acid as well. And I guess now is as good of a time as any just to talk about wrap a little bit more and my, I guess my absolute disdain for the move. I think, I think I've already mentioned this. It's antithetical to a speed run. While sometimes it might look like the fastest strategy or it's the safest strategy it is slower now my biggest gripe and what I didn't want this run to turn into was when you get to the late game and you still have rap on your learn set and you're wrapping all the very tough battles even all the way up to the very final fight of the game I think that's very tedious very boring very slow and it was my mission in this specific run to avoid getting to that point to where I'm using rap as a crutch on every fight into the late game like oh please Please, Alakazam, don't hit me. Let me just wrap you down. Oh God, please don't psychic me. I didn't want to get to that point. And it was very frustrating routing this one. Like
like I said, I probably made it like 95% of the way through the yellow routing, and I did not like the way that it was turning out. So we'll see me kind of get away from the wrap a little bit later, but it's so necessary during this part just because you only have pretty much hard hitting, like bubble beams, your only move that can hit hard. But for me personally, wrap was a huge point of contention for this run. It made me not like the way this Pokemon played at the start. And trust me, even on this optimized run, we're seeing a lot of wraps during this section. It didn't feel great. It was necessary to progress at a low amount of battles without doing too much extra training, but I didn't like it. I just kind of gritted my teeth, made it through it. But trust me, guys, I'm not going to take the wrap strategies into the late game. I think that's pretty lame overall. But that's pretty much it for this section. We normally don't talk about Rock Tunnel, but wrap is just like a, it's a polarizing thing for me in this run. And I really wanted to draw the spotlight on it, just kind of like how it felt to route this one. And this was like a huge little gauntlet where you had to use wrap a lot. So I really wanted to touch on it and just give my overall thoughts. But we're done with this part. We can skip over to Celadon. And you already know the first order of business is going to be the rocket hideout. And in here, we're not going to pick up any high money items. I went back and forth, like our vitamins really worth it on Tentacruel. And at the end of the day, with high speed, I just didn't feel like they were. So we're going through the straight line path here very quick. But I kind of got caught up a little bit talking about the slow leveling group, talking about rap too much. And I forgot about split data, so we're going to bring it up. Usually I do after the third gym, so let's take a look at it now. And I'm going to be competing against Sand Slash's time on this one. And remember that Sand Slash was a, it's a top 10 Pokemon. It had an incredible time. And as much as I've been kind of dogging this Pokemon, saying that I have a love-hate relationship with it and all of this kind of stuff, we still have an almost three-minute lead after Lieutenant Surge. Now, if you're wondering about this Misty split here, uh, it's a little bit ahead because we did Misty before Nugget Bridge, whereas Sand Slash had to do it after. But three minutes over a top 10 Pokemon. Now, remember, Sand Slash will pick up Swords Dance and really start to cruise in that late game. But for now, this is a pretty good spot to be in despite everything. And that's why I say I have a love-hate relationship with this Pokemon because it's actually really good. It just doesn't feel really good at some points in the game, but let's keep it going. Everything's standard here. Let's talk about that Celadon buy. I just talked about vitamins, so we're not doing anything extra, no extra TMs. The only singular thing that we're gonna do in here outside of picking up the fresh water is that I'm gonna pick up an extra fresh water so that I can get Ice Beam. I feel like I'm always an advocate for Blizzard. Like if you can just hold off, if you don't need Ice Beam, getting Blizzard later is just overall better. But for Tentacruel, Ice Beam is really good because we really don't have that much coverage right now. And Ice Beam overall can just save us a lot of time to that point later when we get Blizzard. Hopping over to Pokemon Tower, we're skipping past the rival, and we're going to be talking about the Gastlys. I feel like I've been doing this a lot lately, kind of pinpointing when a Pokemon can't take care of the Gastlys efficiently. Now, it's going to be a two-hit. You can crit, but that's not too reliable. And I guess the main thing to, to note here is that you can get unlucky. You could get Confused Ray, hit yourself a few times, take some Nightshades and faint. Maybe you can get licked, get paralyzed. It's not great, but it's something you just kind of have to deal with. It's not bad overall. Now we're moving on to Cycling Road, and I do catch the Snorlax today from my HM user. It was completely unnecessary, and I didn't have to do this. And just to be honest with you guys, I forgot about Tentacruel being a Surf user, and I thought that an early Blaine catching Snorlax for Surf would be the way to go, and I just never changed it. Didn't really save time, but I think it's always cool to catch the Snorlax. But there is going to be something we have to do here. I have to pick up two extra extra battles. There's going to be a far right backer that has four Grimers. I picked this one because it's one shots, four one shots. Even if you fought the very first backer that only has two Pokemon, it's still going to take you four turns to do it, but it, their Pokemon's going to get a turn as well. So the turn economy is bad. This is the most efficient. And then I'm going to take on the Voltorb guy here. I always talk about how I skip this person. I don't think the experience is necessarily worth it. And we're going to see here, we're going to get to a battle where it's going to use self-destruct two times and almost knock me out. Generally, this is why I skipped this battle, but today I needed a very, very specific amount of experience. I want to say it was about 3,100, 3,200, and the combination of the Voltorb Trainer and the Four Grimer guy gave me the perfect amount of experience in the least amount of time possible. And in the Safari Zone, it's the bare minimum, but we do pick up Surf. Surf is pretty big, very, very strong move. Unlike Starmie, Tentacruel really wants to use this move, and that's mainly because Tentacruel just doesn't get that much coverage. 
Now we're gonna be hopping straight into Erica, and this is another instance where we're gonna be using Wrap. You have some decent ranges with Ice Beam on her Pokemon, but for my money, I think Victory Bell is just really dangerous. It would love to use Sleep Powder or just waste your time here. So just chipping it down with Wrap until it's in a guaranteed one-shot range with Ice Beam, it just felt the best. And then after that, I go straight Ice Beam. Even though Bob Plume can put you to sleep, I just found the risk versus reward. It was worth it to go straight Ice Beam. And a problematic trainer for a water type, not too bad. Now remember, water poison, neutral to grass. But the main thing here was avoiding sleep. And overall, this one's not too bad. Next, we're going to be heading down to Fuchsia to take on Koga, but I do have to talk about his psychic trainers that are mandatory before him. Now, this is another rap situation. In the first juggler, the drowsies aren't that threatening. I could just go Ice Beam if I crit I one shot. Otherwise, it's a two hit. It's a lot faster. Uh, this trainer does not have good AI, so that means it'll go for other moves that aren't confusion or something like that. And even if they do hit me, they don't hit that hard. Hard, so it saves time. You do have to wrap the Kadabra. It's pretty dangerous. And the real issue, the real thing you have to use wrap on is the second juggler. It's drowsy is at a level to where it knows psychic. It has confusion as well. So it can be a big nuisance. You can see that it does slip through a psychic move and do a pretty good chunk of damage. And the Hypno, even though it doesn't have psychic yet, it can still do some pretty heavy damage as well. So this is yet another point in the game where it's absolutely necessary to use wrap. Honestly, these two trains some of the tougher trainers in the game especially while you're trying to figure out the run but we do hit level 35 after the hypno good for damage rounding but more importantly we get access to barrier now you don't think much of this move and this is a strategy that I kind of picked up from running tentacle so much redoing its run barrier is key to the run it raises your defense by two stages doesn't seem that good on paper but it's really good for one fight and you can get some very tiny little amounts of badge boosting from it you can get three total that will help us out at certain points, but let's just hop straight into Koga. Now here, you could use Wrap on the Coughings, because if they use Smokescreen, it could be pretty bad. Surf has a pretty high percent chance to one-shot them outright, but I have seen it miss quite a bit. I have been Smokescreened quite a bit. So you could, you pick your poison here. Do you want to have a safer run, use Wrap, chip it down, then use Surf, or do you want to just go straight Surf, try to save some time, but be a little bit riskier? Here, I decided to go a little bit risky. I don't hit the one-shot range on the first one. Luckily, it only goes for Tackle. When I get to the Muck, I'm going to set up some barriers and that's for one thing only that's just to ensure that self-destruct will not one-shot me or be a threat at all and you can see that the Weezy is going to go for self-destruct it actually does very little damage and that's a pretty quick pretty easy badge Next up is going to be a swift swim down to Cinnabar. There's nothing extra today. The only thing we really have to do is contemplate on if TM28 is actually Tombstoner, brother, or not. And then we can just get straight into the gym battle. Blaine's a pretty simple battle. Just use Surf. That's all you got to do. Now, I actually played a little safe here. I set up barriers. Now, what the barriers do is ensure that when I get to the Arcanine, I just have a lot of defense. Even if it uses a bunch of takedowns and survives a bunch of hits, it really doesn't matter. I think I overdid it watching the footage here. Maybe I thought that I was getting like a special badge. I don't know what I was thinking. Sometimes it's hard to rewatch the footage, narrate over it. But the point is here, I play it safe. I have Surf. Not that big of a deal. I wasted a couple of turns overall. When that's over with, I can head straight over to Sylph. I don't need Swords Dance, I don't need any extra battles, so I will be going up to the 10th floor to pick up the Rare Candy. It's very important for slow leveling group Pokemon, and it's pretty much just straight down to business after that. We're gonna hop straight into rival number five. Pidgeot still has Sand Attack here, so using Wrap is the best way to go if you're a coward. Now here I'm going to set up Barrier. This is pretty much for the next Pokemon, and I'm going to go for Ice Beam. Now luckily the Poke guys I say, hey, he's going to go for Ice Beam instead of Wrap. We're going to give him the crit. We get the bird out of here. We move on. Now I haven't talked much about this, but we're using the Venusaur team for the rival. Razor Leaf, like, even if it's neutral, still pretty threatening. But Gyarados is a pretty big wall. We have to use neutral Ice Beams here, and it can do a lot of damage back. That's why I use the Barrier on the Pidgeot. Eventually, I take it out, but you can see that Dragon Rage still kind of hurts. 
It did use a Leer, and then when we get to the Growlithe, it's going to use like a Leer too. So that combined with another barrier setup means I have enough badge boost to when I finally take out the Growlithe, along with Blaine's special badge boost, I can just one shot the Alakazam with Surf, and we're sitting pretty because that means at the very end, Ice Beam can one shot the Venusaur as well. But this fight was tough. That's why I held off for so long. We did pretty much everything else in the entire game before coming here. But Tentacruel, when you have a plan, you get some levels, things went pretty well. But we do have the Psychic Gym coming up next, so let's see how that goes. No need for an intro for this one. Kadabra can be threatening, but we do have Wrap. We're still going to be using it. As much as I hate it, we're going to get it to a range to where Surf can one-shot it and we can remain at full health. And Mr. Mime is kind of the spot you want to set up. It does have good AI, but it has multiple psychic moves, so it, there's a high chance it won't do any damage at all. But I do need to set up barriers here, and this is where I'm going to do it. Three barriers will put Venomoth in a one-shot range. Now, this thing isn't guaranteed to go for a status move. It could go for something like Leech Life or something like that. But just to be able to one one shot it felt good and the barriers will put us into a range where we can two shot alakazam we outspeed it so it pretty much has one shot to hit us and it has to crit if it wants to take us out and i just kind of dared the computer to do that i didn't want to continue to use rap strategies at every possible corner so you can see i take a little bit of risk i take a little bit of damage from sidewave i've never seen sidewave do that much damage before but that's fine we do survive and we actually pick up the seventh badge and tentacruel's looking pretty good no need to waste any time, we can go straight into the final gym, there's no extra training. And it's, this one's really simple, I use Ice Beam on the lesser Pokemon like Rhyhorn, Dugtrio that can just be knocked out with it, just to save some PP, and then I just go straight Surf for the final three Pokemon. It's all one shots, very clean, very easy, you always knew it would be with a water type against Giovanni. But that's all eight gems down. And after the battle, this is the time. Notice at the very end of the fight, we leveled up again. That was because of that extra experience on Cycling Road. And this is the part of the game where I'm going to use a ton of rare candies. I have 10 total right now. I'm going to use nine. I'm going to get up to level 52. And that's going to set us up for the rest of the game. Notice I saved one. I'll kind of talk about that after rival number six. But let's just kind of hop into that and get that over with. This fight is much different than rival number five, just because Pidgeot does not have sand attack and instead it has agility now, which means that it'll prioritize agility every single turn since we are a poison type. This means I can fully set up with barrier and the badge boosts are gonna stay throughout the entire fight just because we're in the slow leveling group and I just used all those rare candies. So I fully set up, I take it out and then Tentacruel just starts dominating everything. Even Gyarados with these setups from barrier can be a two shot, so it's really not that much of an issue issue and the only thing that's kind of dicey about this fight as we progress into it is alakazam i don't want to use rap surf is a clean two shot so i go for surf it hits side beam it confuses me and of course i hurt myself which means it gets off a second side beam but you can just see the resiliency and tankiness of tentacruel right here i survived pretty comfortably and take it out but that was pretty unlucky i could have easily got crit or just lost there to some computer shenanigans let's not get into it let's not even think about it and at the end with the setups we're still boosted because we didn't level up. That means I can once again one-shot the Venusaur, take out the rival, pretty clean. Now we're just looking ahead. So before we go any further, let's take a look at split data once again. And you can see that every single split is green for Tentacruel. That means it has gotten a lead early and just hung onto it for the entire game. Now going into the Elite Four, Tentacruel still has a four minute and 40 second lead. And remember, let me just reiterate this one more time. Sand Slash was a top 10 Pokemon. So to be leading this much going in means that Tentacruel's a pretty special run, despite how awful it feels to use Wrap. And I think outside of that minor little hiccup getting unlucky on Lieutenant Surge, this run has been pretty immaculate. It's played out really well. And it's funny because it doesn't feel like a fast run. If you're playing this run, you're using Wrap in the mid game to avoid some challenges. It doesn't feel like you're doing too great until you get to about this point and you're starting to say, hey, this run's actually pretty quick. Like I'm done with rival number, I'm done with G Giovanni pre two hours, and I'm about to rush through Victory Road pre two hours. It's pretty nutty. It's a pretty fast run, but it doesn't look like it. But the split data is pretty interesting. You can just see that, yeah, it just dominated. So it'll be interesting to see, because Sand Slash was like, what, like a 94 out of 100? What would this Pokemon get being this far ahead of it? But you never know. Their disaster could strike. You never know what will happen in the league. Now, the only thing leading up to it to mention is that I'm going to pick up that Victory Road rare candy. Or 
remember I saved one earlier and this will make two so I'm saving two candies to use during the league and I'm gonna be replacing rap everybody round of applause because rap will no longer be on the learn set you don't have to worry about Alakazam or Gyarados in the late game you don't have to worry about me using little cowardly rap strategies it's gone it's impossible we're not gonna be doing it but without further ado I think it's time we just hop into the elite four and see how it goes Lorelai is about as straightforward as it gets. Mega Drain is going to do all the heavy lifting here, but Dugong knows rest, and that means the AI will only use the super effective move against our poison jellyfish. That means I can just freely set up barrier for some extra damage. Now, you're not going to one-shot everything, but being a water type alone lets you pretty much avoid any heavy hitting moves here. And after just a little bit of a slog, I do get through this one with no trouble. I don't think I even noticed here, but I accidentally left Hiker Anthony in my Pokey Red assembly here, so worlds are colliding realities are melding together it bothers me a little bit I don't think it'll bother anybody else but I did keep ice beam here mainly because of the flexibility 10 power points means I can just kind of liberally use it like on the onyx is to save power points which means less menuing less elixirs all that kind of stuff and then I'll just swap over to surf for the fighters this one is also straightforward just like Lorelai so let's kind of move on to something more challenging While Agatha isn't as bad as she is in some runs, it's still a luck based fight like it tends to usually be. I use my final candies of the run here, and after level 55, you have a pretty nice two shot range on the Gengar as well as outspeeding it. This means you still have that little slight chance for like a Hypnosis or a Confuse Ray. And it does go for a Confuse Ray here, but pretty much only giving the Gengar one turn, about the best you can do here. I do ignore the confusion, and we get past it. With Golbat, I need one barrier for ranges at the end of the fight, and Haze can be annoying here, but Agatha, she starts to kind of juggle her Pokemon, she switches two times, and at the end of the day, all it accomplishes is giving me some free damage. I do make a teeny tiny mistake here by not going for Ice Beam on Golbat, but it doesn't cost me anything other than just a single turn. The Haunter does miss the Hypnosis as well, and that's essentially the last hurdle of the fight over with. The final Gengar doesn't have Hypnosis, so the last big threat here is Nightshade. It's the hardest hitting move. I can tank multiple of them. In this fight, it really wasn't too bad, but I did get it to go really well here. But just know that you could have some bad luck and still walk away with a win here. On to Lance, and this is where Barrier gets its most use. This is where I love Barrier. I still have Ice Beam here, but the extra defense from setting up is very helpful just to eat Hyper Beams without taking too much damage, while you just kinda use those neutral Ice Beams to chip down the Water Snake. I do make a mistake here. I set up too many times on the Gyarados, and I get some bad luck with Dragon Range. Now you can see that it does a lot of damage, but the Gyarados used Leer here. It saved me from getting to the red health at least. Now from here, the fight's pretty much over. Now I do set up an additional time, but it wasn't needed. I had 171 speed, Aerodactyl has 170, and in the heat of the moment, I didn't put two and two together, and I set up again. Very minute mistake, didn't matter much, but from there, it's pretty much just a matter of holding down A on Ice Beam until the fight is over. And once again, I gotta give a shout out to Ice Beam. The extra PP was just really helpful. Blizzard, it's not gonna one-shot the Gyarados anyway. So unless you wanted to pick up Blizzard and you wanted to just spam it in this fight, you'd have to use a lot of PP ups, waste a lot of time overall. But speaking of Blizzard, I will learn it heading into that final battle. And speaking of which, let's just see how it goes. Pidgeot is the lead and this one is slightly awkward and requires some patience. I use candies on Agatha which means my level up will occur after Alakazam, arguably the hardest Pokemon left in the game. What I do here is I set up once for a badge boost and then when I finally blizzard the Pidgeot I'm ready for that spoon wielding cat. That one badge boost makes Surf a guaranteed two shot and the one single solitary win condition for Alakazam is if it gets a psychic crit. Now even if Psybeam crits, there's a whopping 97% chance that Tentacruel would still survive and I'll take those odds any day of the week. Now you could argue, hey Matt, you lost the Scott's Thoughts Parasect race due to this line of thinking that Alakazam just crit you and you lost. But hey little Timmy, sit back, listen to this. Even if I could go back in time, I would make the same call because being paranoid about low odds is a pretty pathetic way to live your life. 
but I take it out. And here's the great part of the fight. I level up and I have a present. It's gifted to me on a silver platter. It's Rodon, the living hyper potion. He's just begging to be mega drained. And not only that, I can set up my last two barriers, which are pretty important to the finish of the fight as well. I put this sick puppy out of its misery. I take it out back. Gyarados with two badge boosts is a clean two shot with Blizzard, but focus on how much barrier trivializes this thing. This is what I wanted to happen with Lance, but can we get a slow motion replay of my health bar? Seriously, it's like I got hit with a wet noodle with like a bubble or a poison sting the damage is so low that's what i love to see and speaking of sick puppies arcanine sorry to do it to you bud at the end is venusaur and almost like it was planned two badge boost on radon it gives me a great range for a one shot and blizzard it does what it does it puts the final stroke on the masterpiece that is tentacruel's run Tentacruel finishes with a 2 hour, 17 minute, and 46 second run, and I was blown away by the dominance of this Pokemon. For the tier card rating, this jellyfish gets a 95.24, which puts it in some pretty elite company. There's no change at the top of the tier list as expected, but Tentacruel still manages to shake up the top 10, and that's no small feat. Coincidentally, it does take the number 9 spot, pushing last week's Sand Slash run to number 10. It's unfortunate that this run finished two hundredths behind Haunter. That's .20 of a percentage behind Haunter. But if it makes you feel any better, I do think Haunter's a pretty old run and it could be improved at least a little bit. So I guess it's safe to say that my hypothesis so far was correct. The pre-evolved runs of Sandshrew and Tentacool, they showed me enough just to know that with some tiny improvements and the extra stats that their evolved forms could be incredibly good and they were indeed both bangers. Now I still have plans for Clefairy, but I don't want to just keep playing the same game over and over. I know I do that a lot, but I want to mix it up. Let's go back to Crystal. Let's do another cross gen run, and then we'll come back to Clefable, and then maybe Primeape. I don't know. We'll see what the plans are. But that's really all I got for you today. Special shout out to my channel members and Patreons. Your support, it means a lot, and if you stuck around this long, you're a real one. I appreciate it. Comment that down below. If you are new here, subscribe to the channel. And now that I'm thinking about it, I probably need to do a lesser run soon. I need like a Pidgey or a Geodude. I feel like everything I've been running has been coming up gold so i need to feel some struggle i usually save that for streams like the side stream but let's not go on a tangent i'll catch you on the next one bye